never once we actually won a silver medal. We wanted it really, really bad because all the sacrifices and the commitment that everyone made towards the previous SEA Games, it's just so much. I don't think anyone that haven't been through it will understand. The reality hits when the final whistle blows and you realize that this is not the year that you're going to make history. I think it just hurts so bad. It hurts to lose, but it hurts more when you don't perform your best. And that's what hit me the most because of my injuries and all. And I just felt so helpless throughout the whole game. When I got back to the hotel, that's when I received my brother's text. He said something like, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, but at the end of the day, if you give your best, then that's enough. That was a moment that I broke down so bad. Uh, and uh, it actually encourages me to give even more the next game. We have fans that we really want to thank. And the only way to thank them is to put up a better fight the next game. And though the odds were against us, the strength of a team, it's... I mean, it's something that can create miracles, I would say. When the final whistle blow and we found ourselves defending the bronze medal, you know, everyone just hugged each other. That was a moment that is going to stay with us for a long, long, long time. Like, maybe forever. Ever since I was a kid, I realised that I'm actually different from others because I suffer from this condition called pectus ex cavatum, which basically means that my chest is not symmetrical. So as a Christian, I always believe in miracles. I still remember crying to bed so many times because I really wanted a miracle. Hope that the next morning that I actually wake up, I'm gonna be the same as everybody. The amount of disappointment that I go through every morning is just indescribable because it's basically like you wake up, then you look at yourself, and then like, oh shit, it's the same. <laughs> when you go to shower with your friends, you actually go half naked. I have teammates really laughing at me and that was a very tough part of my life because nobody likes to talk about it. I know that that's something that I cannot change. But gradually over time you realise that life isn't really about what's on the outside because what's on the outside is just so temporary but what's on the inside you can spread to a lot of people. Maybe you can use yourself as an example to make others feel better about themselves. That's when I accepted myself for how I am. Ever since I was three, I'm only surviving on one kidney. And the doctor actually told me, you can't play basketball. So in my head, I was like, I can play basketball, you cannot play basketball. I was a really cocky kid. When I reaped some success in the early days of playing basketball, I was so confident about myself. To the extent that I can just talk trash to anyone. I can just dribble the ball up the court and I'll tell you that you cannot defend me. Then I'll score and I'll tell you again that I told you you cannot defend me. To think back is something that is just inhuman, man. <laughs> when I was 17, I was invited to join the national team. Then I was like, nah, I think I'm so good, I, I can't improve anymore. <laughs> Second and third time, I gave it a try, but the trainings were so tough that I just, I don't want to join. I don't want to go through this hardship. But thankfully, the coaches actually gave me one more chance when I was 21. And that was the best decision I ever made in my life. It changed me as a person, it taught me how to be a professional, not just a player, but professional in whatever you do. I think the toughest part is when you are injured, how do you decide to come back to court? When is the final injury for your career? I broke my last two right finger, and as you can see, it cannot be straight. I hurt both my Achilles, hurt both my knee before, and I got a really tight back. You have to push through the pain every single day and tell yourself that, okay, you will get there. Even if you don't get there, it's okay because you are trying your best. In the past, just Singapore basketball and people will laugh because they feel that there's no hope in this sport. But gradually over the years, I think the standard of basketball has actually increased tremendously to the extent that uh, people start to know about the game and know about the team. I realise that more and more kids are coming to our games as well. They just cheer so loud for you. They'll be like, Coach, I saw you score. Eh. Suddenly you just feel that whatever you're doing is worthwhile. And that's when I've 
I felt that okay, this is my best way to reach out to them even more because they can watch me play and I can coach them at the same time so that they can become better than me and bring Singapore to the next level. The key to this CSC Games for us is really staying together. I really love the brotherhood that we have formed throughout the years. A lot of times when you want to give up, a lot of times that you don't want to show up for practice, you think about your brothers. That's when you push yourself a little more, push yourself a little harder and try to challenge yourself every single day so that we collectively can achieve a better result. We want to improve our results from the previous SEA Games and I would see it as an opportunity for me to help out the younger ones that we are going to pass the baton to in the future because we cannot be playing all the time. We are ready for KL. Come back us up.